Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides us, especially during these time to come. I want to say that all we got is this truth, and that's the truth according to the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because as the scriptures say, in Psalms 40 and 7, you know how Rashad said he comes in the volume of the book. It was written to him. So, of course, that includes the brotherhood, etc. Because while we walk in the valley of the shadow of, the, of death, we should fear no evil, especially if we have the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai with us. And one of the things that the Lord revealed to his people, the hopeful elect, that's a strong tower is the true name. The names to call on for salvation. Lord willing, we're part of that number because like the scriptures say, everyone that says Lord, Lord, which means Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. Will not basically be delivered because they're not going to be preaching the word of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah with truth and sincerity. So I'm going to go from there to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. It reads, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. So yeah, we got to run into that strong tower and be safe. Because some people say that you can call, on, call the Lord any name, which we understand that that's not true. Because just like you have a name that's given to you, if someone calls on it, calls you a different name, you're not going to hear them. You're not going to respond. So we understand in this truth that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, has a Hebrew name. Yah meaning he, Yahweh meaning to be or exist. And his son, Yahweh Shai, has a Hebrew name. Yah meaning he, Yahweh Shai meaning deliver or savior because he's going to save his elect. Of Israel from the chosen seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob got his name changed to Israel after wrestling with the angel. And today that consists of the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are not heathen because their father's seed line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. This truth is all we got in this wicked kingdom. As the scriptures say to Job and Job 9 to 24, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. I'm going to go from there to Isaiah 33 and 6. It reads, and wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And everyone doesn't have the fear of the Lord. But the Lord put the spirit on his people to have the fear, to receive the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures in order to receive salvation. Because the house of David is being built up. And while we in this wicked kingdom, we're all we got. Until our Lord, Yahweh Shah returns to destroy this kingdom, to establish our kingdom of everlasting righteousness. And we won't have to worry about being in, in this polluted land no more. We pray to this soon, but we know we got to have patience. Patience means to suffer. For these prophecies to come to pass. 
but we can see the prophecies is, is bouncing off the page. I'm going to go from there to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27. I'm going to start at verse 27 because, like I said, ultimately, we all we got. And we pray that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh keep the spirit on us to endure to the end and ultimately put off the old man and love not this world unto death. So we, why do we have to lose, forsake all these things, these worldly things? We pray that Yah Bashim Yah Shah, like I said, put the spirit on us to do so, to do what's pleasing in their sight, because ultimately they're going to give us what we need to get through the day. But I'm going to go from there to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27, because because um, the disciple Peter, the head disciple, was asking this question about the fact that if we forsake all, what will we receive? It reads, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So Peter said, We have forsaken all and followed you. How about Shem Yahweh Shah? Which us, the hopeful elect, are trying to do. And Yahweh Shah said unto them, Verily, which verily means truthfully, I say unto you, that ye which follow me, and the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And you see that say regeneration, that proves reincarnation. Because re, I believe, means back. Gene means genealogy. And Asian means nation. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. So like Yahweh Shah said, if you forsaken all for Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah's name's sake, then you're going to receive more. Much more in the kingdom. But we got to go through the trials and tribulations and get tried like gold is tried in the fire. Because of our disobedience to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and our past generation, as well as our people who are still doing today, especially two thirds of our people, we have to go through this punishment. Because, like I said before, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The so-called white man who forefathers Esau Edom. This is his kingdom. We're under cap we're in captivity under those devils. And we have to, you know, suffer the, the sword. They're the sword of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. We have to take that punishment, that chastisement. Like a father would chastise his child, but the Lord still loves Israel. I'm going to go from there to Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. It reads, And when he called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You must follow Yahweh Shah. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, then the same shall be saved, shall save it. So yeah, like I said, we losing our life in this kingdom. We're not going to indulge in the wickedness that a lot of these people like to indulge in. Whether it be committing adultery. Not, basically not rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability. Some people can't act like they can't stop getting their the, the head lined up. They act like they can't stop eating things that's abominable written in the dietary laws. Like crabs, shrimps, lobsters, pork. They act like it's so fun. They want to save their life on this side. And basically, they're going to end up losing their life. Especially when World War Three kick off and them nuclear missiles get shot over here in that lake of fire. And when Yahweh Shah returns with the angels and the chariots to deliver his elect and also destroy 
two thirds of our people that 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 made it up to that point, along with the heathen, because they're likening to the heathen because they basically are following out to the ways of the heathen, and they love this wicked kingdom, which is America, spiritual Egypt, Sodom, etc. Yahweh Shai is gonna have to destroy them, and they're gonna have to come back in the kingdom through the loins of an individual that's one of the individuals that's delivered. And of course, some of the some heathen are going to be saved, not saved, but they're going to be held for to go straight into slavery for that thousand year period. But Esau Edom, the so-called white man, is going to be after the thousand years of slavery, round up and basically burned up and extinct. But I'm gonna continue on, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Like you see a lot of people in the industry, they basically do what you what you what they say sell their soul in order to make it in Esau Edom's kingdom, which ultimately is not gonna profit them. It's gonna ultimately lead to their destruction anyway. That's why us the hopeful elect, we're building up our riches in the kingdom of heaven and not on this side. Because on this side we're at the bottom. But we must exalt the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah while we're in captivity. Showing that we're begging for mercy and we're repenting and seeking the Lord while mercy while grace is open. Before that the the um the doors of grace closed, just like the times of Noah when that the doors of the ark closed and the flood came. But I'm gonna continue on. Or what should a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore should be ashamed of me and of my words and this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So like I said, Yahweh Shah is going to return with the angels and destroy, to deliver his elect and destroy two thirds of our people along with the heathen that make it up to that point. And like I said, we, we fear the Lord and we understand that also once you come into this truth, it's basically like no turning back. That's like a big risk. And if you do it, you you obviously don't have a fear of Yahweh Bash from Yahweh Shah. Because what did Yahweh Shah said in Luke 9 and I'm verse 62, it reads, And Yahweh Shah said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. So yeah, you put your hand on the plow, you get into this truth, and you look back and go back into the world, into this polluted land, you're not fitted for the kingdom of heaven. So more than likely, you're going to be destroyed. And like they said, the demons that hop, hop on you for doing that is going to be stronger than the demons that were on you before. Because we all had a demon on us when we came into this truth. And that's why we try to tell our people. I'm going to go from there to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. It reads, Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So yeah, we 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 fear the Lord and we understand the terror of the Lord. Everything is of the Lord, whether good or evil. I'm gonna go from there to Hebrews chapter 10. Because this is not the side that you want to be on, especially when the Lord returns. 10 and verse 31, it reads, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Because like I said, the Lord controls all. And ultimately, like I said, the whole point of this lesson is that this truth According to the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, is all we have in this world.
because ultimately there's nothing here for us. Like I said, it's polluted. Like it says in Micah 2 and 10, arise and depart. For this is not your rest. It is the polluted. And it will destroy you. Because ultimately, we stay here, we're going to end up being destroyed anyway. Because these devils that's in rulership will end up destroying their self. <laughs> along with, basically, self-destruction. Along with the people, the inhabitants that's on the earth. Along with, that includes the animals, the, the, the plant life, etc. But... That's all I got. Call Elohim La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakadash. Double honest to our positive and elders. A great millstone. Teach and rule well with truth and sincerity. Who I learn from daily, Lord willing. And salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.